Our rationality alone cannot come up with an answer about the reason for our existence. Carlos Castaneda, The Fire from Within The limitlessness of human possibilities is inspiring. With our eyes we see the cosmos and with our hearts we are able to perceive the infinity of the universe. Our power as human beings is immense, as is the mystery of the world we represent. But are we capable of approaching the unraveling of this mystery? Definitely yes. How exactly? Through the accumulation of awareness. What is this and why is it vital for every human being? The answers to these questions can be given by the philosophy of Nagualism, which was written about by one of the most mysterious and mystical authors of the 20th century, Carlos Castaneda. Nagualism is the doctrine of the Toltec Indian people who lived in ancient Mexico. The key point of the Toltec's doctrine is the energetic fact of three attentions of a person. According to Castaneda, three attentions are the secret of human awareness, which reveals the true meaning of human life. Through the depth of understanding of the three attentions and the sublimity of the teachings of Nagualism, as well as through the study of its relationship to other philosophies, such as the philosophy of the Rosicrucian Knights, we have a chance to come closer to understanding the inner human essence. Let us, friends, quickly come closer to realizing the greatness of the ancient knowledge, traces of which were left to us as a legacy by Carlos Castaneda. Nagualism teaches that man is a magical being, and his attention is divided into three parts. One part is responsible for a person's relationship with the world, at the level of rational activity, and is called the first attention, or tonal. The other part represents the magical and hidden side of human consciousness. It is called the second attention, or the nagual. And finally, the third element of human attention is the highest state of his consciousness. It is this that leads to the highest sensitivity and concentration on the integrity of the surrounding world to such an extent that the line between man and the world dissolves. In his books, Castaneda writes that at this moment a person is engulfed in fire from within, which is the essence of the third attention. Carlos Castaneda, in his writings, leaves evidence that the energetic facts that form the heart of the teachings of Nagualism were formulated and perceived by mystics who lived until the time of the conquest in Mexico. Castaneda calls them ancient seers. Other mystics who, after the extermination of the ancient seers by the conquistadors, restored the lost teaching, are called by him new seers. According to Carlos Castaneda's teacher, Yaqui Indian Don Juan, the key difference between the ancient seers and the new ones is that the new seers sought to approach knowledge systematically, building a hierarchy of concepts and facts in a strict and clear sequence. In contrast, the ancient seers preferred to simply use knowledge without paying due attention to its explanation. It is the fact of the desire to organize knowledge and build a terminological base that would clearly describe and explain this knowledge, as well as the systematic and research approach to obtaining it, according to Don Juan. That is one of the keys in separating the method of knowledge of the ancient seers from the methods mastered by the new seers. Eagle and Emanations of the Eagle Toltec knowledge says that at the basis of everything lies a primordial force, which was called the Eagle by the ancient seers. They chose this name as a result of the fact that the force that created the world was perceived by the magicians of antiquity in the form of an eagle due to the limitations of their system of describing the world. Following this, the magicians of antiquity saw that the whole world was permeated with thin energy threads which the new seers called emanations. According to the perception of the generation of new magicians, the eagle is a source of energy threads. Carlos Castaneda wrote, that a person is energetically a luminous cocoon inside and outside of which there is an infinite number of emanations. Those of them that are contained inside the luminous cocoon of a person were called by new seers internal or small emanations. The energy threads located outside the human cocoon are external or large emanations. Perception. Nagualism or Toltec knowledge teaches that the small emanations completely reflect the large ones and are their complete correspondence. 
In other words, the human energy structure contains the properties of the external world and in all respects is a reflection of the structure of the universe. At the same time, Castaneda writes that every moment small emanations come into agreement with large emanations located outside the human cocoon. This attunement of emanations is the command of the eagle. A person is not able to avoid this process. The force that aligns the energy threads inside the cocoon with the external energy threads is called perception. Don Juan told Castaneda that every person has perception from the moment of his birth. This means that according to the philosophy of Toltec teaching, each of us, from the first day of our lives, is in close interaction with the world around us, both on the physical and energetic levels. Human domain of perception. Castaneda writes that the set of internal emanations involved in human perception in ordinary life is called the region of the known or the region of the tonal. It is thanks to this multitude that a person builds the world of everyday life with which he is accustomed to interact. In addition to the area known to man, there is another set of emanations available to him that are not involved in his normal state of consciousness. This area is called the unknown or the Nagual area. It is the unknown coupled with the known that represents all the possibilities of man as an energetic being. The realm of emanations of the known and the unknown constitutes the human realm of perception. Since the small energy threads inside the human cocoon reflect the entire multitude of large energy threads located outside it, then in addition to the human field of perception, there are many emanations inside the cocoon, corresponding to the entire diversity of the universe, reflected in human nature. This area is called the unknowable, the glow of awareness. In his books, Castaneda describes the process of interaction of external emanations with internal ones, which is always accompanied by the glow of emanations both inside the cocoon and outside. Once human perception has established a correspondence between the small and large emanations, they begin to glow and the person begins to be aware. Toltec knowledge teaches that seers perceive the process of awareness in a person's energetic structure as a bright glow of energy threads. At the same time, Castaneda describes high or low human awareness as a result of greater or lesser pressure of large emanations on small ones. In other words, a person's awareness, according to the seers of Toltec teaching, is determined by how closely and consciously his perception interacts with the energy categories that make up the world around him. The beauty and grace of the Toltec teachings described by Carlos Castaneda, among other things, lies in the fact that the categories and facts with which this teaching describes a person and the world around him are in close interaction with each other. Flowing like streams from the life-giving sources of ancient wisdom, they merge into a single bottomless river of knowledge flowing into infinity itself. Assemblage point. Seers perceive a person as an energetic cocoon containing small emanations of the eagle and capable of coming into alignment with large emanations thanks to human perception. Castaneda writes that in this case, on the human cocoon there is always a small area of increased luminescence similar to a point. This concentrated area of luminescence seems to slide across the cocoon highlighting certain emanations. Seers call this energetic formation the assemblage point. It is the position of the assemblage point on the cocoon that determines which small emanations inside the cocoon will be brought into correspondence with the external large emanations of the eagle. Therefore, when the position of the assemblage point changes on the cocoon, the person's perception of the surrounding world also changes. Friends, if you want us to take a deeper look at the topic of the assemblage point, write to us about it in the comments. Experience and Attention The philosophy of Nagualism defines attention as a critically bright glow of emanations inside a person's energy cocoon, caused by their constant use by a person as a result of accumulated experience. In other words, the more a person uses some part of his awareness, the more familiar this part seems to him and his perceptions are concentrated on it, which is essentially the definition of attention. Those emanations that are activated by a person more often glow the brightest. That is why they say where attention goes, energy flows there. 
A clear understanding of the terms discussed leads us to the definition and description of the three human attentions. First, attention. The human area of perception in which there are small emanations that are constantly used by a person to perceive the world of everyday life represents the first attention of a person or the area of the known. Toltec seers call this attention the tonal or tonal region. Don Juan said that the tonal is what we are as ordinary people. He taught Castaneda that every person has his own personal tonal. On the other hand, all of humanity has a single tonal that describes the world in categories that are considered understandable and clear to all people of a particular era. In other words, the tonal is a clear sequence of reactions or programs in the human consciousness thanks to which it reacts to the manifestations of the surrounding world and describes them. Carl Gustav Jung, a Swiss psychologist and psychiatrist of the late 19th and mid 20th centuries, teacher and founder of analytical psychology, described the collective tonal as the collective unconscious in the images of which he saw the source of universal symbolism. According to Carl Jung, it is the collective unconscious that determines people's behavioral patterns which is the essence of their overall tonal. The key to the tonal is its ability to build an inventory. Thanks to the inventory list, the first attention organizes all the information coming from the human senses. With the help of an inventory, a person interprets in familiar categories what he feels when interacting with the world. This is how he builds and describes the world in a familiar manner. According to the Toltec teachings, the tragedy of the tonal is its tendency towards dictatorship. In other words, having once built an inventory list in the human consciousness, the tonal tries to fit into it everything that a person interacts with. If this fails, then the tonal does not notice what does not correspond to the created picture of the world description. This is exactly what first attention does to another part of human consciousness. Second attention. Together with the first attention, the second attention constitutes the duality of a person. Castaneda describes the second attention, or in other words, the Nagual, or the region of the unknown, as a set of emanations that is included in the human field of perception in a person's energetic cocoon, but is not involved by a person throughout his life. The Nagual is a vast and immeasurable area of human consciousness that includes all human abilities as a perceiving being. That is why the Nagual is a hidden but accessible part of a person's awareness. Castaneda writes that the ancient seers developed practices to develop the second attention by igniting one emanation at a time in the realm of the unknown. This was the result of the fact that they got stuck in the quagmire of second attention, contemplating their imaginary greatness divorced from reality. Don Juan said that the apogee and culmination of the inferiority of the worldview of the ancient seers was their manic craving for belief in their own invulnerability. Blocked by such a vision of things, they were unable to oppose anything to the real threat from the conquistadors who came to capture Mexico, except the conviction of their own immortality and power. In contrast, the new seers saw that in addition to the realm of the known and the unknown, there was a realm of the unknowable. Instead of lighting emanations one at a time like the ancient seers, they practiced simultaneous illumination of all the small emanations located in the human cocoon. They called this glow the third attention or fire from within. In his books Castaneda emphasizes that it was the third attention that opened up the vast horizons of human perception to new seers. Starting from the idea of the erroneous conclusions reached by the ancient seers, the new seers began to structure all available knowledge as well as the knowledge they accumulated through vision. They called vision the process of building a correspondence between small emanations located in the area of the Nagual and large emanations outside the energy cocoon. If perception is an equivalent process, but with all emanations available to human awareness, then vision interacts only with the emanations of the Nagual. Fire from within is an open and developed human awareness in which all emanations in the human cocoon are illuminated with a high intensity glow, due to which the line between small and large emanations called the human cocoon 
dissolves and human awareness merges with the power of the eagle, with the call of infinity. Don Juan said that the highest achievement of a human being is to reach this level of awareness while maintaining one's vitality and self-awareness, which dissolves as death approaches. One of the key ideas of the philosophy of Nagualism, which Carlos Castaneda wrote about, is the idea of weakening the tyranny of the tonal and transferring control of consciousness to the Nagual through ordering the tonal. This is how, according to Toltec teachings, a person gains vision of the unknown and realizes his full potential. Don Juan taught Castaneda that the human tonal consists of two parts. The first part personifies action and human instinctive impulses without comprehension or deliberation. This is the messy side of the tonal. In contrast, the second part personifies decisions and judgments, a person's ability to rationally perceive the environment. This side represents a more complex and more flexible tonal. Don Juan called the first attention, which combines the harmony and balance of the two sides, the accurate tonal. The accurate tonal is amenable to reorganization and when it is ordered, is able to transfer the reins of power to the Nagual. The accurate tonal is a developed intellect in which the instinctive human part is subordinated to the higher cognitive ability. To achieve this, all members of Carlos Castaneda's group received an academic education. It is the developed intellect that is able to constantly take a person's perception beyond the description of the world perceiving new ideas. Thanks to the comprehension of new ideas, new emanations are constantly activated in the energy cocoon, which until this moment have not been used by man. Through the perception of new ideas, one explores unexplored areas of awareness. This is how the accurate tonal comes more and more into contact with the depth and immensity of the Nagual, bringing a person closer to the fire from within. The colossal conclusion follows from this. A person is able to reveal his awareness only through close contact with the surrounding world. Exploring and delving into the secrets of the universe, he ignites new emanations in his energy cocoon, which make the awareness of the Nagual accessible to him. Castaneda writes that the accurate strong tonal is able to rid the human consciousness of its dictates and constantly rebuild the formed inventory, developing intelligence and erudition as well as rebuilding human perception to the awareness of new ideas. In order to more fully and deeply penetrate the mystery of the three attentions that Carlos Castaneda wrote about, let us turn to the philosophy of one of the most mysterious and mystical knightly orders of the late Middle Ages, which is the Order of the Knights of the Rose and Cross. The Rosicrucians are a theological and secret mystical society, according to legend founded during the late Middle Ages in Germany by the mystic and occultist Christian Rosenkreuz. According to Rosicrucian philosophy, the world is illuminated by three suns. They called the physical sun, the view of which is accessible to all people, the sun of Jehovah. Its warmth and rays nourish and give life to all creatures on the planet. In addition to this, there is an intellectual sun called Lucifer by the Rosicrucians. The developed intellectual sun becomes the soul sun, which is called Christ. According to the philosophical ideas of the Order of the Knights of the Rose and Cross, these suns, although they illuminate a person, emit not their own light, but reflected light from the true spiritual sun, which they called Vulcan. Lucifer represents the intellect, not illuminated by spiritual light. This is the first attention or tonal of a person, which describes and organizes the objects of the surrounding world, making it tangible and understandable to human consciousness. The tonal itself is not capable of creating anything. It is only capable of organizing and describing the available data. The Rosicrucians said that Lucifer is a false light that must be redeemed by the true light of the soul or by Christ. Christ is man's revealed sensory perception, his second attention or nagual. Lucifer and Christ constitute the duality of man as a knowing being. Feelings and sensory perception are the second tool for understanding the world, along with the intellect. Developed sensory perception expands a person's consciousness, allowing him to explore the intangible and subtle nature of things, both inside himself and outside. By developing feelings, a person gradually brings himself to the awareness of the true spiritual light that his spiritual son emits. Thanks to feelings, 
a person comes to realize unity with the spirit of nature and the world, with the united power of the universe. This is how a person lights up with fire from within, moving into the third attention. Developed feelings free a person from illusions. Illusion is a game of the tonal, its program for manipulation and enslavement of a person in the first attention. By overcoming illusions, a person uses second attention, deepening his understanding of the feelings that arise. The greatest illusion that a person encounters in the first attention is the illusion of separateness. Not seeing the singlet essence of life in other people, a person separates himself or herself from the general human consciousness, of which one is a part by virtue of being born in a human body, and withdraws into one's first attention, completely submitting to its manipulations. This is how a person blocks the opening of the second attention, and the circle closes. Overcoming illusions is a natural condition for the revelation of the Nagual. The wise of this world have left each of us with the only effective tool for developing second attention. This tool is sincere and creative work. The desire to create is the fundamental impulse of an intelligent person who is aware of his direct involvement in the fate and evolution of the entire human family. Thanks to selfless and creative work, each of us develops creativity in ourselves, which activates new emanations of second attention in our consciousness. Through creativity, we learn to see the world clearly and without illusions. Creativity is the basis of sincere work. It is through sincere work and further developing of feelings that a person gains his individuality through the Nagal and moves away from the illusory uniformity imposed by the tonal. Through creative and selfless work, a person learns to see the power that leads him to accept responsibility for one's own life and a conscious duty to work for the good of all humanity. Thus, the tonal submits to the Nagual. Don Juan said that a person's spirit interacts with him through signs, the Nagual notices them and the tonal interprets them. Mystics claim that when human feelings come into contact with the sphere of the spirit, insight occurs. Illumination is flashes of emanations of the Nagual in the human cocoon under the pressure of large emanations. It is the call of infinity caught and deciphered by man. Man is a jewel magical being who can materialize ephemeral intangible forms through his senses and intellect in the material world. With the help of new ideas and sincere creative work for the benefit of all humanity, impulses of the spirit penetrate human life carefully and non-violently changing life in accordance with the highest subtle principle of man. The development of second attention occurs only through close and conscious interaction with the outside world. Research potential reveals new and unknown facets in a person. Through an ordered strong tonal and developed feelings one realizes one's full inner potential as a knowing being. The word happiness in Slavic dialects consists of two words, with and participation and means connection with the mystery of the universe through fire from within. Happiness is conscious participation in the true evolutionary growth of the entire human family through the development of the first, the opening of the second, and the acquisition of the third attention. Happiness is the natural desire of any reasonable person for own home in eternity, which he or she once left.